Alright, welcome back to week 10 and this week topic is about data binding. Okay, um, so what is data binding? Actually, the data binding is one library that uh, categorizes like a support li supporting library that uh, allows user or allows you to bind UI component in your layout with the data source. Okay, so we can create connections uh between the data and also the ui components okay uh we done this usually using the programmatically if you know that um you can change the text view text by using android kotlin ktx or using the find view by id method okay so uh in this case um you are about to know the alternatives or maybe the futures way to uh, bind the data from the data to the UI layout, okay? So um, it used the declarative format, okay, to bind the data instead of using the programmatically approach, okay? So um, let's talk about this one, yeah, without the data binding, okay? So previously, if you want to show data to your layout, what you do is usually using this find view by ID method, right? So for example, I want to change the text view to do here with the title here. So uh, what you're going to do is just using the find view by ID and you look for the ID of this, um, uh, uh, the, the widget or the view in the layout, yeah? This one is the text view ID of text to do. And then when you have it, you start in a uh, judul variable and then you change it with this uh, attribute text here okay so um this is this is without data binding we dig in the layout to find the appropriate um widget and then we change the attribute in inside the activity okay so uh, another example if you activate the android ktx uh, by importing this automatically as you can see here mm, it import the synthetic mean the uh, activity or the layout here and then um you simply just change the text by calling judul.text the title so um this is a without data binding so what is the problem um when you uh when you work with uh, that methods okay the problem is it could be a null pointer exception risk okay uh, imagine that uh, you have to lay out and its layout have same id yeah for example txt tutorial and then um in a one activity you try to change the txt tutorial text with uh, uh strings okay but um you uh you access the wrong layout yeah so on that activity it loads the layout a but you try to access txt tutorial or txt whatever that belongs to the layout b which is is not loaded yet okay so therefore when when you compile or when you run yeah when you run the applications it try to access the object that doesn't exist yeah because it belongs to another layout that there will invoke the the exception the null pointer exceptions okay the problem the second problem um that you uh, without data binding is um, there is an encapsulation bridge, or in the uh, other words, it's um, uh, this one is OOP rules, break the OOP rules, yeah, what is called, yeah. Um, why is that? Because a fine view by D basically is a way to break into the view layout, get everything about the internal structure of the layout, and start manipulating the layout, okay? And you done that in the activity or in the fragments okay um it, it means that a uh, one classes try can access another uh places another access to another places and it break the rule of encapsulations okay imagine that uh the fragment was created to handle itself without 
um, getting access to the other stuff like the layout and do something with that layout okay so the layout can handle itself the fragment can handle itself it's called encapsulations yeah it it won't know its other okay but uh, with find view by id it means that this fragment class can have access to the layout and do something with it uh, it's called a capsulation bridge okay and uh, fun for you by ID soon will be depreciated yeah in soon yeah if you look at the fun for you by ID method in it also with Android KTS uh, uh, Kotlin it tells that um, the fun for you by ID will come soon okay so you need something you need alternatives yeah um, to uh, to completely uh, not using the find view body anymore okay so the solutions of this is uh, by implementing data binding so data binding is already embedded in the project and actually you don't need to add additional dependency however it needs to be activated yeah in order to activate your the data binding in your project you simply call write this build features data binding true in the model sorry in the module gradle and then um yes that's it yeah you, you activate the data binding and uh, your layout now can bind the data okay so um in order a layout can have a data binding features you have to encapsulate the ui with this layout text okay so let's let's say this one is the layout of your fragment and the actual layout is slides in here and you have to encapsulate with this tag okay layout and layout okay and then um, inside this layout you can now define the variables the data that you can bind with uh, the widget or with the view yeah so I, for, for instance yeah as you can see here i'm uh, defining the variable user yeah okay and this is this one is not traditional data type this one is actually an object a class of user okay okay i'm creating um, an object of users with the data type of a class of users okay uh, and then you can um binding you can create the binding class actually it's generated automatically when you do the rebuild project this binding class holds all binding from the layout properties and the layout views and know how to assign value for the binding expression so no need to call to find view by id no need to call to address to access the view within the layout uh, within the uh, fragment okay what you do is simply um using this data binding class this one and then you get in access to the layout and with this variable you can access um uh, sorry, this one it should be user, not title, yeah, because I'm defining user as is here. So the binding dot user, and then you can define or initialize with the new user object. Okay, so the binding dot user is accessing this one, and equals user. Uh, this one is calling the uh, constructor. So it means that this user now have value. Yeah, it's it's have an object, it's already initialized, and then it holds this value, the test and the users. And how to um, bind to the layout is simply by using the expression language. The expression language is a way to um, manipulate the content of um, attributes. Yeah, for example, as you can see here, we have attribute text. Uh, it can manipulate with a, um, a language, the expression language, and also you can do some of logical expressions in here. I will explain that later. Okay. So what you see here, it's 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 accessing yeah the add, and then you have a curly bracket here, and you access the variable that you define in here that already have value um, in in the in the fragment here you you define value here and then you try to access the property of the class okay user dot first name then and that's it this is actually um bind the data and the layout and when you run this um your text view will shows the first name of users automatically okay and there's also another binding type which is called listener binding this is our lambda expressions that are evaluated when the event happens so we 
well, we bind the listener and it will trigger when 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 that that uh, uh, activity happens okay data binding always create a listener which is set on the view when the event is dispatched the listener evaluates the lambda expression so um data binding the listener binding always uh creates a, uh, create a listener which is can you store in the form of interface so for example you have this interface of name of presenter and inside it you have one functions on save clicks okay so you can define um parameter uh what you uh the parameter that you like so um because this was in interface um uh, it should not have this curly bracket i will delete it later okay the interface only contain the name of function not the body okay so you need to delete this okay and how to write that in the layout using expressions language is simply creating the lambda functions okay uh the left part is the uh, parameter functions you may ignore it just set it like this as empty or you may fill it with uh, variables here and then the right part is actually calling the uh, functions the destination function so this lambda functions will trigger the on save click which is belong to this interface presenter okay and you pass the task i believe this task is another variable that you already define with the same way like you do in the user here so this one is task and then you send it into the on save click all right so i'm going to show you uh, on the project letter and then finally two-way binding um uh the uh, two-way binding is a kind of by bi uh, binding the data which is can have a two-way order means that you can store the data or you can uh show the data yeah you can update the data or show the data um it's usually useful if you work with the edit text yeah something that can uh when user can input the value into it like an edit text or checkbox or radio button and so on and so on or spinner yeah um you add these small equals here and then followed by the brackets okay and uh, when we change something in that edit text or checkbox yeah it will immediately update the data yeah it will immediately update the data so you can use uh, the equals notation here to to create a two ways bindings you can set value but also at the same time you can also receive value automatically without uh, creating listener without um do something in your activity okay so you define something like this okay All right that's it about the concept behind it so um before i continue with uh, our today tutorial i will discuss a little bit about last week homework as you can see here um the last uh week homework is uh, you need to create the new field yeah which is called is done and is an integer you can write that in the class to do here and then in the dao um i'm creating a new query yeah the to do done query is simply updating to do and set is done equals one yeah where the uid is equal id is some okay it's just like this and um i'm uh modify a bit of this select all to do functions the query i'm adding this where okay so uh, now i'm not i'm go i'm not go going to call the daily to do here i'm just calling the select all to do and when user tick the tick the checkbox i just call the to do done here so where it's done is equal zero and that's it right um because i modify the table you need to uh, define migrations policy which is two to three here and we add one column is done integer default is zero and not null and don't forget to add the migrations to your build db and also in your data database here you also 
at the migration two to three. And then next, um, inside this um, uh, to-do list view model, yeah, you have the clear task, which is you call the delete to do. Now you need to change that with do uh, to done. And because it requires the UUID, I just simply use the UUID to do UUID. Okay, that's it. And don't forget if uh, inside the create to do fragment, you have to when you create the button create here you um set listener for the button grid here is uh, there is uh, is done here you have to add the is done inside the to do class here okay that's it for the homeworks okay it's easy i think and then uh let's jump now with the uh, today projects okay so the plan of today um project is I will I will demonstrate to you how to implement data binding into the adapter of to do list and also in the edit fragment to do list. Okay, so um, let's see it after this. At first, let's set up the data binding in your projects. Um, okay, let's just like I said earlier, the data binding library is bundled with Android Cradle plugin but you have to activate it, yeah? To activate the data binding or to enable data binding, open the Gradle. So let's open it in the Gradle script here with module, right? And then inside this Android configurations, you um, add these build features, right? The build features, and then you set this property data bindings true true okay let's set that and then forget to sync now with uh, several seconds okay it actually not download anything because it's already in your project okay done right next um what we are going to do for the adapter is we are going to bind this text of the checkbox yeah with the to-do title yeah remember this checkbox text will show us the to-do title and we bind the listener for the check checkbox which is um uh, trigger the few model functions here and also uh, the listener binding for this edit button which is trigger the navigate to edit fragment okay so we work with this bind methods let's start with the simple one the first one, the checkbox, uh, the the binding with the title in the checkbox here. So, um, in order to apply binding in your layout, you have to encapsulate everything with the layout text. So, open the layout, open the layout in the rest layout, and find the uh, to do item layout. Okay, the to do item layout is a layout that used by adapter. To display this checkbox right so we mostly today work with code so or split yeah code or split so um switch the view with the code tab here and you see everything in the xml uh, language here so um, what you need to do is to wrap everything with the layout like this don't forget to put the encapsulation close cap close tag here in the bottom so it means that your layout now encapsulate with this layout okay so uh, what you need to do next is just cut and paste this xml namespace here which is actually a, a tree of it you you uh, uh you block it all from the constant layout here do the cut to, to do the cut control x yeah and do the Space inside the layout here. Okay, done. This namespace indicate that this layout now became a root layout instead of this constraint layout. So as you look on the design, um, nothing changes. Yeah, nothing changes. Yeah. Now you have the layout tag as the root layout on your uh, what is called the to do item layout here. Right. 
Okay, important. Every time you make change on the layout, especially related with binding, you need to rebuild the project. Let's do that now. Build, rebuild projects. Why is that? Because um, this approach, uh, the data binding will create a class, a class for you, the binding class for you. I will explain that after this. Okay. So we need those class. We need that class. Uh, if you want to work with the data binding, right? Okay. Um, Gradle build running, still running, yeah. Okay, let's jump into the. Okay, it's done, right? Let's jump to the third part, the attributes binding, and in the attributes binding, we try to bind the title of to do inside this checkbox. Okay, let's do that. What first we do is creating variables of object to do. Um, you can done that inside this layout in the very top yeah, data. All right. So whatever you write in here is actually a variable of to do. And it's a, a not a traditional variable. This one is an object. An object of to do which is you can access is in the model.kt and then you can access the data entity class to do here. Right. That's the approach. So um, inside this, uh, where is my layout? The, yeah, this one. Uh, you um, access the package by telling com and go on, go on and access the model. And now you can have access to to do class. OK, so you have uh, the set of variables with to do. And now, um, yeah, we had to do variable in this layout mainly because it contains the to do data. Yeah, it means that the checkbox load up the title of the to do, the image view um, can navigate to edit uh, to do, and also the checkbox have listener when you click it, when you check it. Right? That That's why we use to do variable with the optic class of to do. You may create this in inline or single line. Yeah. It will save space in your layout, yeah, something like this. Now, uh, how to bind this data with your layout, okay, it's with your checkbox especially. So uh, we use expression language. It's um, always begin with a curly bracket and with curly bracket. And don't forget to put an at in the prefix. And then you can whatever write whatever you like. You can do expression language, logical expression language. You can access the variable and so on and so on. So in this case, I'm going to change since this uh, default text here with at uh, the variable name is to do right to do to do dot uh, title. So we access the title of to do and display directly on the checkbook text. All right. Uh, to the rebuild project, very important. Every time you make a change in your layout, uh, just uh, just call the rebuild projects. Uh, Android Studio will build the bending class with the name taken from the layout name with additional infix binding. Yeah. For example, um, this one, I have here is I have the name of to do underscore item underscore layout. Yeah, to do underscore item layout XML and the Android Studio will create a binding class with the name of to do. Uh, it's a delete this underscores to do item layout and infix of binding. Let's check it out. It generated in in Java generated here and you show it, you can see we have data binding here. Okay. Okay, I, I don't know where is uh where it's put it, but um actually there's a there is a class created. Yeah, this one, yeah. To do item to do item binding layout. Yeah, to do item binding layout. Okay, to do item binding layout created on the on the generated classes, right? All right. Okay. 
why I'm getting an error. Let's build one more time. All right. Okay, uh, next um, we are going to instantiate the binding class by using this data binding util, okay? Data binding util, because um, in your adapter, let's open up the adapter, to do this adapter, um, it use its own inflator, see? In, on the create view holder, it use its own inflator and it won't work with our data binding, okay? so we can um, uh, get help from the data binding util class, okay? But first, uh, what you need to do now is to change the view holder parameter to uh, binding class, okay? So we not use the regular view here, we use the, the binding class that has been generated for you. So open the adapter and look for the list view holder here and look for the parameter which is is still few here. Change it with the to do um, item layout binding. To do item layout binding, and this one should be dot root. Okay, dot root. To do item layout binding, this one this will be dot root. Okay. Next, um, we have to change everything inside the concrete view holder. Yeah, because we are not use the inflator from the original view, and uh, we use our own data binding util, okay? So you can comment this to view, okay? We can write our own view now. For view equals uh, data binding util dot inflate. And, and the type is to do uh, item layout binding. And it start with the inflator inflator comma the layout the to do item layout the parents and uh, that's the root you set it as false so it should be like this let me show you yeah it should be like this yep All right okay i can delete this no no All right so we take a we take over the view creations with data binding util inflate methods and we return the view back to the class okay next um instantiate this to do remember even you already create this to do is still a null it's still have nothing it's still not instantiated yet it doesn't have value okay so we have to fill it we have to instantiate this variable by simply inside this bind view holder here. So, okay, before we continue, let's um, uh, let's comment all, whatever you see inside this on bind view holder, comment it all, and we write our binding solution here. So, um, the holder, access the holder dot view. Okay, we have item view, right? Okay dot um to do all right should be view yeah not item view okay let me check first okay all right i found a weird bug here so uh somehow in my adapter in my to do view holder here i can access the view yeah i cannot access the view and i did everything including um cleaning up the project rebuild the project and it does nothing okay so what i'm doing is finally um i just delete my adapter yeah i delete my data adapter and then i recreate my adapter i type everything uh, from the start again and so on and so on and and finally i can have access to my view Okay, why why it's important to ask to have access uh, of this view because now okay I can access uh, the data in here in the to do here I can access it through in the my my adapter so we can access it by calling to do and then we set value for it by using the release of to do list just copy it of positions. Okay, 
and that's it yeah when you access to do this position means that you access a particular to do object and you set it inside the holder view to do all right okay let's get back to the slide after you done instantly to do now the object to do hold uh, the value of particular to do in the positions right now um it's automatically bind when when the to do have value in it if uh, an object is already set it in it it automatically bind with the uh, expressions you write in the widget yeah in the check tax okay when you run the projects yeah now um it will immediately choose the title on the checkbox okay let's try it okay um this is the result and nothing really changes here but um the text that you see here now is now uh, setting up with programs as you see here in the bind view holder we only have this uh, simple programs simple codes and the way that responsible to shows this title here is the bindings between the to do variable we have here with these expressions that we write inside the checkbox okay so that's it for the checkbox binding let's move on all right <clears throat> the listener binding uh, next, we are going to implement the listener binding um, for this check even checkbox even. So um, listener binding are binding expressions that run when an event happens. Okay, in original versions, a uh, check change listener was applied in the adapter. As you can see on the bind view holder, you have a listener. You set up the check change listener, and also it requires access to the object. Yeah, remember. Um, uh, have created the, the the I have been created this um, functions in the list view model. Uh, the clear task it requires this object to do. Okay, so therefore we have to pass this object the to do object inside the listener. Okay, and then um, to apply the listener binding first we need to create custom listener in form of interfaces because we are going to create a lot of listen uh, interface in this project therefore we are going to put it into a single file to make it easier to access okay next a right click on the view new um just kotlin class file just choose file here and name it as interfaces right so you have an empty file and what you need to do is creating our first um, interface interface to do you can name it anything you'd like i'm going to um create interface uh, about the check chains yeah about the check chains so you can write any function name as you like but in this case i'm just following the original name function name of the check change listener so we have this interface the to do check change list okay listener and we have single functions on check change on checkbox change yeah so in the original um listener it contains two um a parameter i think first is the comp compound object the gp gp of compound button yeah this one is the the checkbox itself you can access the checkbox itself by by accessing this uh, object and second one you define is checkered boolean yeah um is checkered boolean it came from the original check chains listener okay it contains at least these two things yeah the object of checkbox and also whether it's check or not it's from is a boolean okay and we add our own um parameter here which is the object of to do okay why just like i said previously we have to uh, uh we, we need access uh we need to gain access to the to the to do object yeah and it means that i want to access this to do variable in the layout okay okay um 
now every listener you write must be defined first in the layout open your layout again create a new variable name it as listener and um it came from com dot okay i have a stuck little bit here dot um of a uh, view and then you now have access to the, your listener to, to check this listener try to make it single lines to save space okay all right yeah so i have a listener variables here now inside the checkbox um what you need to do is um uh, bind the listener uh, listener method inside the on check change attribute of the checkbox okay so inside this checkbox you write the android on check cut change don't worry if you cannot um getting access to the auto auto um automatically um uh, attributes checks here yeah just make, make make sure that you write it correctly yeah even uh, every single letter here on check a change yeah on check a change is um a checkbox uh listener the default checkbox listener when when you check the checkbox okay on check change in here we use the listener binding okay it means that we creating our lambda functions okay lambda functions right um in the left part is the parameter of functions um the default check change um you can leave it empty and the left the, the right part is where you call the uh, listener where you call the listener so in this case we just call the listener dot on check change and it requires two things the compound uh, three things yeah the compound button i mean the checkbox itself the is check and the to do okay so when you write something like this and also to do you i think you getting an error in the first two part okay because um this uh the android studio doesn't know what is tv what is check is check okay it doesn't know that but to do is not error why because you already have it in fire in the form of variable in data above in order to make it not error here you have to define first in the left part parameter by just typing the same thing is check Cut. okay so it's not error anymore so this left parameter is the parameter of the functions of the default original function of check change which is which is um only have two parameter the checkbox and the is check and when we set it yeah when we send it to this one and it not works fine okay so this lambda function is uh consists of two parts the left part and the right part okay the left part is the parameter of the functions the right part is the body functions and as you can see here we not write our codes here we just um trigger the listener of our own interface on check change interface okay so that's it okay when user click on the check box it will trigger this interface okay trigger the interface now um where we should put the interface of course um this layout handled by adapter open your adapter again now we apply implement the interface inside this adapter how can we do that it's very simple let me um enter the development first okay um inspect this class header and in the recycle view blah 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 here just add comma and we add the to do um check change listener we implement the check change listener as you can see here we um uh we can have error here we see have we have error because we have already every interface that you implement must have codes inside it you have defined functions you have to uh, read body function in it so alt enter implement member it is our own custom on check change okay it now have three parameters same thing a same parameter that you already define inside 
the interface here okay it's same things right so we can access the component or button you can access the is check also the to do but the first thing you check is similar like in previous example is check is check equals true and then we can delete the object to do okay we can delete the object to do but as you can know it that we have this work around adapter on click here we just call it adapter on click and it requires you to send object of to do why right? because in the to do list fragment in the to do list fragment um we have this two click of um of the view model here of the to do list fragment here and then it called the clear task yeah the clear task it requires the to do okay therefore in this case we just send the obg yeah the the to do the object of to do that's it yeah on check this um rebuild the project right and try it again oh yeah almost forgot yeah almost forgot so um this is very important i usually forget what is um every time you create variables inside your layout yeah these variables and also this variable um it always comes in empty or null it 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 not divine it's not instantiated yet okay so you need to instantiate the variable you need to fill in the variable inside your adapter inside your in this case in our adapter so in this case inside the on band view holder you do the same thing like this yeah same thing access it by calling holder dot view dot uh, listener because this one is interface it's looking for something the class that implement the interface which is its own class the to-do list adapter class which is implement this one so we just set it as this that's it guys okay so let's hit the emulator and let's take a look uh the actions okay um this is the result so let's let's tick this one the tick box and it deleted not actually deleted but it just simply changed the is done from zero to one and because of i put the uh, where is done equal zero here in the query select therefore you cannot see um the the task that i checked previously okay so it works fine um the binding the listener binding replacing our previous method which is using the fun view by id or accessing using programmatically inside the bind view holder we replacing with this on check change all right so let's move on to the next one We do the same thing for this image edit button okay so um it's in uh, it use a symbol on click listener so we define the same thing here uh, to do edit click open your interface once again and we create another interface for the click interface uh, to do edit click listener something like that and then fun on edit click and it only contain one parameter the view like an original on click listener okay the view one and go to your layout inside the layout um we create once again we create another variable variables name it as uh, edit okay edit listener with a type of com to solution to do few uh, few and we have this to do edit click listener try to make it in a single line here right next um yeah uh, let me show something first uh, remember in our previous code um when we click the edit button we we trigger these following actions yeah remember that we trigger the action edit to do fragment navigations and we pass this uuid the unique id of the to do and we navigate to the navigations to the edit fragment yeah remember that 
and um, how do we get this UUID? Of course, we can grab the UUID from Judo, but it's in not it's not it's not possible that you access the Judo inside this uh, um, expression language, yeah, to access the UUID. But um, I have some other solutions, yeah. I have some other solutions. Um, first, yeah, the first solutions you may you can you can have is create a text view, uh, set visibility to nothing gun, and set UID into it. But I have a better solutions. Uh, remember, um, the tag attributes. Remember that when you can put something inside the tag attributes value in it. Uh, okay, that's a very handy for these situations. So we just create the tag variable, the tag attributes here, Android tags equals, and we just simply um, write the the UUID inside this image view tag. Okay, so this image view tag now contains the UUID. Next, we call the Android on click, right? So this parts because it's listener binding you may write something like this dot on edit click okay so you can write view in here write view in here but since um this one is not different than uh, with the original on click you can uh delete this lambda functions yeah we can delete the lambda functions and just simply call the on edit click okay why because my edit click uh, it does the same thing it also have the same parameter with the on click uh, uh, in original versions so it does the same thing therefore I not I don't need um, custom parameter for it so I just not use the lambda function just simply use something like this right on edit click and now uh, say uh, next thing is same like a previous you have to implement it inside, inside the to-do list updater just add one another comma here um to do edit click listener you, you you drop another interface in it alt enter implement members on edit click okay we have another on edit click okay so what we should put inside is on edit click basically the same thing you do like in previous example yeah you access the uh, fragment directions you access the action edit to do fragment you apply argument so let's do that for actions equals um to do list fragment directions you have action to the edit to do fragment remember it requires you access the uuid how can we have access to UUID. So uh, that's, that's why you put the UUID inside this, um, where is it? Inside this tag, yeah, inside this tag. And then uh, you can get a, get a, getting access with the view.tag here. So you can have access of UUID by calling the view.tag. Remember this view object is the image view itself. And because the UUID is an integer, you have to parse it into integers. The quick way to do that is by calling two string and then two integer. And finally, you just put it in there. And now we called a navigation, <coughs> navigations dot find nav controller. Usually we put it here. We just fit few, same things dot navigate to the action. All right so yeah so let's try it let's try it uh, let's launch it please wait uh, several seconds okay let's do that click on it nothing happened because i forgot um once again i forgot um, important things okay so whatever listener you define on the layout you have to uh instantiate it in here dot edit listener equals this okay remember this one is um interface that implement in this class therefore we set this let's hit the play button again and see the result 
Okay, let's try it again. Click on the pencil icon and navigate to the edit. Go back again, and that's it. Yeah, right. So for the recap, here is um, to implement attribute binding, you first uh, encapsulate everything with this layout. Define the variable, the data inside the layout. Write the expression language in the attributes or in the widget. Yeah, in the view widgets. And don't forget to instantiate the data class binding, instantiate the layout variable with data. The last part is always, I always forget that. Yeah, therefore we can have access to the data. And also to implement the listener binding, it, it does the same thing, but you have to write the interface. Okay, instantiate the data class binding and imp don't forget to implement and instantiate the listener. Okay, to work with the uh, uh, binding okay next um, we are going to see how to do the same thing with the edit layout okay um for simplicity um i i have to create separate lay layout yeah from edit and create to do okay so because it's it contains the same layout it contains the same things the same widget we can duplicate from the create to layout in order to do that um you just uh, click on the layout of fragment create to do here right click on it refactor copy file and then inside it you just change the create with edit right fragment edit to do click refactor and that's it you now have duplications duplicate versions the cloning versions of the uh to the layout so first thing you change is um replacing this new to do but i don't we need to do that because mm, let's take a look inside the fragment here let's have a look in the edit to do fragment i think you access it here but remember um remember um we don't want to use these methods yeah we don't want to the activity or the fragment use the find view by edit methods access the layout directly in here but well, okay we can simply delete it okay here and you can you can change it manually inside the layout um the new to do here do we have um edit to do i don't think so let's create a new one um edit to do edit to do Okay, press OK. Yeah, edit to do. Do the same thing for the button. It should not create to do. You need to define the new string value, save changes. Save changes. All right. Okay. All right, that's it. Now um, we are going to uh, implement two way binding with this layout. First, you need to do is same thing like in previously. Previous item layout you encapsulate everything with this layout tag and don't forget to cut this xml and xml namespace into the layout right and don't forget to do the rebuild project okay let's do that rebuild project next okay um after rebuild done you can have access to the binding variable the class binding variable the uh, fragment edit to do binding remember this class is generated automatically after you rebuild the project from android studio so okay let's wait uh, several seconds here let me pause it a bit All right it's done okay since our layout have this name fragment underscore edit to do means that it will create a class binding with the name of fragment edit to do binding okay let's let's uh open your attitude to fragment we create that variable private lead in it far and data binding a uh, fragment uh edit to do binding all right so we create this one thing the reason we creating this binding because um it's actually uh the way we access the view okay the way we access the view the fragment that the edit to do binding can have access to the view layout and therefore we divide it above as a variable and of course 
um, we no longer use the inflator here. We are replacing with our data binding. Same thing like, same fashion like um, you do the same thing like in the adapter versions. So we comment this, okay. And next, uh, we instantiate the data binding with the same binding util. And sorry, the uh, util dot inflate. Uh, the inflator, comma, the layout. Okay, be careful. The layout is use the fragment edit too. In previous example, we use fragment create here, but we now have our own fragment layout. Okay, the parents, which is the container and the attached to the will be false. Returns data binding. Okay, dot root. All right. So this is uh, the way you instantiate the binding class. Okay, I think that's it. And next, um, we create variable to do same thing like we do in previous example. We create variable to do in the layout of fragment edit to do. In here, we create data variable of to do in the type of com view. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Model, yeah? Model of to do. Okay, so we got one variable of to do. All right. All right. Now, next, we instantiate this to do variable. Remember, every time you create this one, you have to instantiate it. You have to fill it with the object. So go back to edit to do fragment. The, the, uh, where we should put instantiation is in this Part. Yeah, remember, we have um, access to the view model. We fetch it from uh, SQLite database. We pass the UUID here. And now we call the observe view model and the live data being observed. And if the loaded loading is done, means that the to do from this it variable can contains the value. Means that you can comment this first, everything you have here, and then you need to getting access to the uh, to-do of the layout. So I want to access this to-do and and then set it value as same as the it, the it from the observe view model. That's it. You instantiate the to-do on the layout. Now, since you already have instantiated to do, means that um, means that in the layout you can use expression language. You can click split here to uh, getting access of this edit text faster. So, this click on the edit text here. Okay. Now, the first edit text is about a title. So, we create this two-way binding by simply called add equals curly brackets and then you access the to do dot titles two way binding means that every time you make a change yeah you type something in this title it will immediately change the to do title object yeah to do title value inside the object okay so no need to create listener for this yeah because we use the equals two way binding Remember, the two-way binding we uh, usually use when you work with something with the view that can uh, retrieve object um, input, yeah, such as edit text, checkbox, radio button, and so on and so on. Okay, do the same thing for the notes. Click on the notes, yeah, here. Click on the notes, Android text. Uh, create two-way two-way binding here to do dot notes that's it yeah so it binds with this edit text uh next one is okay i just uh, explained this for you and next one is um uh check the uh correct radio button okay so for example if you load the to do with high priority means that this one should be set to true or medium should be set to true or low should be set to true so look for the first one the high priority all right click on the radio button high priority and then because 
um, we already have check it through here, means that high priority always check it. We're going to test it with our binding, okay? So we check for to do priority. So um, I'm using here is, what I'm showing you here is um, the logical expressions, yeah? Why it's getting an error? Because it requires you to write either true or false. Remember, the check it here is Boolean. So it, it, it wants something that, that uh, returns true or false. Because the priority is integer, it's, you, you have an error here. So uh, we check if the to-do priority is equal three, remember, three is the high priority, means that it's true, otherwise it's false, okay? Uh, it's like if, yeah, if the priority three means that this check is true, otherwise it's set as false, okay? You just copy paste this one, Okay, copy paste the uh, whole lines, control C, and do this, uh, and paste it in the medium priority and change it to two. Do the same again for the low priority, just to one, okay. That's it, yeah. So it loads up correctly. If the priority is three, it's going to set this radio button as true, right, right. Uh, radio button two-way data pending. Actually, if you read more in the internet, there's a, a way to uh, create data binding, two-way data binding for radio button, but it's way too complicated for now. Therefore, we not use two-way data binding for radio button. We just simply use the listener, regular listener that listen whenever the radio is selected, okay? Therefore, we add new interface, open the interface, we uh, add this interface of radio, radio, click listener, and it's simply on radio click, yes, yeah, simply simple radio click as usual, radio click, okay, it contains a several parameter, the view, the priority, integer yes and finally the object itself the to do okay so why we have to access the object because whenever you uh type when you, whenever you uh click the radio button okay whenever you click the radio button you have to update the to do object okay so when i click high priority you have to update the to do priority to three click below to do priority to one Okay, go back to the code, uh, implement the listener, variable listener, we create a new variable in here and name it as radio listener, radio listener. And it comes from com um, view, radio click listener, and yeah, I think that's it, okay. Okay, 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 yeah, save it. Next, um, yeah, experience language on each radio button. So every time you click the radio button, you have to update the tutu with the appropriate number of priority. So do that on each single radio button you have here. So this one, Android dot on click, okay, you implement the um, listener binding. It's always with lambda here, um, radio listener dot on radio click. It requires these three things, the view object, the view object, the priority, which is this one, because this one is three, yeah, we define it as three, or, oh, by the way, by the way, um, since we also already have tag here, Actually, we can remove this, um, what is called, this priority, yeah? We, you can gain access to tech, yeah? You can do that, yeah? There's an alternate, alternative solutions. And finally, we pass the to do, okay? Um, it's fine for T and to do, but this Android Studio doesn't know what is view, okay? So we can write the view here, yeah? View, the first parameter of the on-click always view, 
okay so we copy paste this and do this three times three times yeah just like that and finally you have to implement the listener inside your edit fragment yeah in the edit fragment you just add comma here um radio click listener interface implement it okay and then you have one radio click and it's simply just call the obj dot priority equals priority that's it yeah if you an, another solution uh, you may not need to have priority here you can have access to the tag dot to string to string dot to integers so you no longer need the access to this priority okay but uh, that's it whatever you choose is same thing okay right all right okay the last step is to make listener binding for button save yeah button save for um on the view created uh on the observe view models you already have the button save yeah on the button i think inside the inside the on view created you already have button save but i forgot to create one so um we do the same thing here uh, with the listener so open the listener the interface i mean we create another interface uh, to do save change listener fun on to do save changes okay we view and we have object to do right okay um define the variable inside the layout of fragmented to do in here variables name of um just listener com uh view uh to do save change listener okay all right right now um we call that on the button save yeah this one android on click yeah android on click and then we call the listener binding uh, listener dot on to do save change it requires view also the to do itself we have to write view here okay and implement the interface inside your attitude to fragment and comma to do save change listener alt enter implement member okay right okay guys uh, inside the on to do save change listener you just call the view model but but i want to do something first i'm curious um about the content of this obj so i'm going to set this as to string here and lock it alt enter and let's have a look the content of the obj to do so hit the play buttons because i'm going to prove to prove uh, the two-way binding here so you open the emulators and then you open the locket the locket here and then just uh wait a minute just call the choba check here filter the choba check here so it should be comes up with something so let's hit the play button and wait a first several seconds okay once again i forgot yeah remember every time you create listener or something a variable in here you have to define it you have to instantiate we already done that for the data binding to do the to do here we also not yet uh define the radio so let's do that 
onto the sentence and the ratio. So in this part, um, data binding in the on view created data binding dot um, listener. Okay, right. This this what this happen when you work with the emulator yeah it takes a lot of resources and somehow it uh, frees your android studio okay listener equals this also you binding the radio radio listener with this remember always do this otherwise it your binding won't work okay so let's play again all right okay this is the result uh as you said as you can see here i already set up the lock here to by check on whenever i click the save change so let's edit something here so when i click on the save change you can see the locket here the title is low task the notes is blah the priority is one because it's at too low let's see what happened when i change the title low task to here save change and it automatically change it yeah it means that whenever you type in or change something here and change it yeah for example when you type inside this edit text and because it used two-way bindings the object updated immediately so when you click save change you can see notice the the notes is already changed same thing when you click this radio button when you see that click on the high priority save change the to do object now have priority three okay so it means that you now have an object to do that ready to be stored inside database and therefore inside this on to do save change we just um call the view model view model dot um uh, update to do okay i forgot i'm sorry i forgot to create that functions let's i'm uh, let's wait of several seconds i'm going to create it first okay um inside the view model you may have this the update to do and it takes several i mean several parameter include the uid you may change this with other versions update to do let's say uh, object here so um you just need to pass the you need just need to pass the uh single object of to do you can work something like this and then you call the launch and fall db build db dot uh, get applications and db dot to do dao dot updates All right so we getting we have to access sing every single of the object to do dot nodes to do dot priority and to do dot uid i think it's the same thing like this one but um we just we just move from uh, remove this parameter into single parameter but also in the update we have to access difference things here okay so you can use update to do or update to do object whatever you like so go back to here update to do and then we going to access every uh, field here notes priority and also the uuid all right uuid and finally don't forget to toast on screen toast dot make text uh, get uh, sorry view dot context comma to do updated comma toast dot length short dot show okay um let's try this once more okay hit the play okay so let's change this to low task 3 
blah blah and make it um, low priority save changes and then we edit again and it's updated okay so it's actually it's nothing changes in this tutorial but we now work your app now work more efficient we no longer access the ui directly from the fragments and since the view find by id will be deprecated soon so it's time to it's i think it's it's the core uh, is the perfect time to learn about data binding and works on your future project with data binding all right thank you for attention and if you have any questions you can reach me at andres ID or drop me a uh, chat in the hangout thank you bye bye for now Thank you.